Today is April 18th, 2021. My name is Charles Souter. Today I'm presenting part one of my series, Active Listening. My main message, talking is king and listening is queen. Communication involves equal parts of talking and listening. Talking is important, but so too is listening. Most interpersonal conflict would be resolved quicker if everyone was willing to actively listen more and talk less. Deals and compromises are more likely when you apply active listening to negotiate a settlement wherein both sides can get something they want. Likewise, most personal problems would be resolved quicker if the person had someone they could share their burdens with. Talking peacefully and respectfully and actively listening are the two key tools for reducing aggressive tendencies, reaching compromise, and releasing pent-up emotions. This presentation offers three reasons why listening would bring about better results. One, to avoid conflict and hard feelings. Two, negotiate a compromise. And three, to vent emotions and find solutions to personal problems. First, area where active listening could prove fruitful. Talking avoids conflict and leads to resolutions. People who choose aggression to get what they want seldom end up with what they want and more often end up with less. Aggressive actions lead to resistance by others who will defend themselves. Fighting ends when both sides get tired of getting hurt and start talking. Feuding leads to conflict, whereas talking leads to resolution. Fighting has never led to anything more than animosity. Aggression and conflict seldom work in resolving a conflict, so to get what you want, you must learn the art of talking out your grievances. Verbal sparring with others to get what you want tends to make matters worse. Only talking and active listening gets the best results. So to get best results, you must talk first and actively listen second. You can learn to talk your way to the successful resolution of disagreements if you put your mind to it. Second area where active listening could prove beneficial. Talking is the best way to reach a compromise. You must tell people what you want if you expect to get it. To get what you want, you must listen to find out what the other person wants in return. The art of compromise is reached by jointly talking and listening. There are a limited number of ways for getting what you want if you can't get it yourself or you're dependent on others or external circumstances. The best way to get what you want is to ask for it or to seek a workable compromise, a deal wherein all parties get something they want. Whatever it is you want that you can't get for yourself, you can ask for help from others who have the power to give it to you. You can make offers during negotiations to trade for what you want. Depending upon how you talk and ask, you can improve your chances of success. By making persuasive arguments with an appeal to reason, you increase your chance of success in getting what you want. You won't succeed every time, but the more you ask, the more you listen, and are willing to compromise, the more you will receive. Asking is a numbers game, so ask more to receive more. The third area where active listening may prove beneficial. Talking is the best way to overcome emotional distress. Venting is a controlled way to release stressful, pent-up emotions. Solutions come when you're forced to express muddled thoughts in coherent words. Once words are spoken, they can be examined and dealt with rationally. Talking lets you get your feelings and thoughts out into the open so that both yourself and others can deal with any issues that might exist involving the relationship. If you're feeling negative emotions towards a difficult situation, the best way to deal with it is to share your, shot, your thoughts with the people who might help you resolve your problem. By getting your troubling thoughts out into the open rather than keeping them bottled up inside you where they might continue to fester, you can begin to deal with your problems by talking out loud. Dealing with your issues by talking them out with someone you trust and when asked actively listening to others who, who need to verbalize their problems is the way to get 
emotional relief. Talking to someone about stressful issues will help you emotionally, even if doing so doesn't immediately lead to a resolution. Talking is cathartic. Getting your thoughts and feelings out in the open allows you and others to acknowledge that a problem exists, and if in fact one truly does exist. If false problems due to misunderstandings, then the problem can be clarified immediately with more talking. My main message is that more is accomplished with talking than by any other means. Besides the value of discourse in forging and enjoying relationships, talking serves other useful purposes, such as 1. Avoiding and resolving ongoing conflict, negotiating deals for getting what you want, and 3. Venting emotions and resolving personal problems. Talking is a high-value activity, but too often it is used solely for entertainment value and insufficiently in other valuable roles where talking can also render value to both the talker and the listener. The more you can apply uh, talking for a wider set of intentional purposes, like the three listed in this presentation, the more value you can, value you can add to your life. For example, Everyone acknowledges that verbal squabbling and ongoing interpersonal conflict and estranged feelings seldom produce positive results, but yet that is often the first instinctual reaction to hurt feelings to social slights. So if you want to enjoy an enriched, less stressful life, then learn to talk and listen more rather than to self-isolate and suffer in silence. Talking and active listening are keys to problem-solving Deal making and good mental health. That's all for now. Remember to stay positive, you'll be happier, healthier, and live longer.